Hey everyone, it's Kristen, and I wanted to do a quick walkthrough of my new deck. It is called the Love Notes Oracle. This is the back of the cards. I'm trying to adjust my light here so that you guys will be able to see everything. And I also have a matching pouch to go with it. And I did the hot pink zipper with a hot pink lining. And um, this deck is one that I call a silly, saucy love and relationship oracle. I always feel like you can never have enough love and relationship decks because love and relationship questions, romance questions are really the biggest questions that people ask. You're going to hear those questions most often. So I do like to have some decks that um, I can use and grab really quickly just specifically to address those questions. And I have a couple of decks already that I've created for that. And this one I wanted to make in a more light, a little bit lighthearted way. I call this a silly, saucy um, oracle deck. And what I've done is combine uh, vintage portraits with some kind of modern cheeky graphics. And each card has um, either a keyword or phrase. And they, you know, it's called love notes because it's kind of like the little phrase down here is like your little love note. And a lot of these are based on idioms. Some of these phrases are based on songs. And so uh, there is kind of, you know, again, more of a little bit of a lighthearted approach, but I have found that you can get some really serious readings with these two. I, I tend to make my decks like that because I personally like a deck that will give me a kick in the pants every once in a while. I don't want it to be too light and too soft and too fluffy that I can't get any real talk from it. So let me just do a quick walkthrough of the cards. Um, this one is Angel Heart. And I am right now still kind of pulling the, a little guide together. But as with all of my decks, I always say, you know, use your own intuition for what you think the card might be, what your first impression of it, of it is. Now, I have another card. I'm going to see if I can find it really quickly. I didn't put these into a particular order. And I created these two as kind of matching pairs. So there's angel heart and devil heart. And um, these suggest two different personalities. And a lot of these cards can be used kind of like personalities to reflect personalities of people, what kind of heart does the person have? Um, where is their heart? Where is their focus? So both of these people are hard to resist, but this is the angelic person. This is kind of like the bad boy. Um, so those two cards are kind of um, like created like pairs. Uh, this one is hugs and kisses. And each card kind of gives you a sense of where you stand in a relationship. If you're asking for a relationship status, or if you want to know what's on your romantic horizon, hugs and kisses is a really lighthearted kind of relationship. It's more of a friendship or maybe friends with benefits. Sweet talk is about communicating, but sometimes it's really related to communicating to, you know, get what you want. Guarded heart. As I said, a lot of the cards are describing different types of hearts. And these aren't so much about who people are, but how they're feeling in the moment. So a guarded heart is somebody who um, has been hurt and they've put up their, their wall. They may come across as prickly. Um, old flame, that's just, uh, to me, I always need a, a card in there for your ex. You know, there's always an old flame or ex that comes up. There has to be a card for separate ways showing separation or divorce or irreconcilable differences. I added this card in addicted to love. Sometimes we're just completely obsessed with the idea of love or maybe we're having trouble kicking um, the habit of an actual person has, that we've become addicted to. Gift of love is about receiving maybe an actual gift, but it's also about um, like a generous heart or generous spirit. Heart's desire, 
this card can reflect the seeker's heart's desire, like whatever it is that they want. It can show um, their attraction to someone in particular. Emotional baggage. When I do relationship readings, I find that emotional baggage is an issue that comes up so frequently. I had to make sure I had a card to represent it. And you can see that the bags are stacked up, so they're kind of blocking her. And our emotional baggage can really create a wall between us and the person that we want to be in a relationship with. This card is old made and you know I've wanted a card for single and happily single you know um, it's you know it's kind of tongue-in-cheek with old maid but to me this is the card of somebody who is single and they may not be looking they may be content in that um, status star-crossed lovers this is a card for um, People who really want to be together, but there's some reason why they just can't seem to make it work. Cloud nine. This is a card of like extreme bliss and happiness. It's that floaty feeling that you feel when you're first in a relationship or feeling in love. Um, but with any kind of clouds, you can look at having your head in the clouds or perhaps being unrealistic about a relationship. The road ahead um, is, you, is a card that if you choose it, it's usually about moving on, making a departure from the relationship. You're looking forward towards the future. You're, you're moving away from something. And I want to show you, let's see, I have two cards that again, they're not really pairs per se. I'll see if I can find them both right now. But I just felt like doing them both with the same characters. And this, <clears throat> this one says misery loves company. And you can see that it's got like a, um, there's like a little storm cloud over their heads. And this one says heart to heart talk. And so these are showing number one, heart to heart, talk, a communication um, to people who are really on the same page in terms of relationship. And this one is showing two people who are probably on the same page, but they're both miserable. Sometimes you're, um, you find two people who are just both miserable in the relationship, you're like they're, but they're not changing anything. They're not really trying to do anything, but they just really get on each other's nerves. So that's the essence of this card. This one is called uh, Looking for Love, and it's, it's uh, typically showing someone who is single, looking for love, but perhaps doesn't know how to find it or which way to go to find love. This one was actually the very first card that I made, and I, once, once I made it, I was like, I really like the look of this, and I think this is about to be an Oracle deck. This is innocent heart. So this represents a personality that's innocent, naive uh, in terms of relationships. They may be very inexperienced. This card is change of heart. And um, I do find in relationship readings that change of heart comes up a lot. And I like to use that to show that there's some type of change that's happening, uh, like in the seeker that they've made a decision to go a different, take a different path. So it's very much like the Eight of Cups in Tarot. The butterflies for me represent change and transformation. So it shows there are a lot, that's a lot of, there's a lot of energy around change going on right now for the seeker. This card is tying the knot and it can show any type of union, partnership, joining together. Broken heart, um, this one would show sadness, sorrow, um, and a recent breakup or feelings of uh, being broken hearted. Love letter is about communication. So, but it will typically show up for um, like somebody who's trying to contact you. Somebody's trying to reach out by phone or email. Um, they're sending you love. Somebody is sending love your way. 
patient heart is about a person who is willing to wait on love. They're not in any hurry. Uh, this is the person who wants to build a relationship brick, brick by brick, um, very slowly. They don't want to rush into anything. Heartstrings is one that um, I kind of put in as one of the last cards that I added. And, you know, when I make decks, a lot of times it's just an intuitive hit about um, a card that I want to include. And that was really the case with Heartstrings. And um, with working with this card, the way that I interpret it is we think about strings um, and also emotional chords. So the heartstrings are like a really deep feeling of love and affection for someone. But we can also look at the string or a cord as something that you may not want to have tied to you. So if you're having trouble releasing someone and this card comes up, it's suggesting that you may need to cut cords. You may need to cut emotional cords or ties with that person. Those heartstrings are really strong. This is the Cupid card. And for me, um, Cupid often comes when you least expect it. You know, it's like you're suddenly smitten with love and you, in, at a time period that is the least convenient for you. And so that's what this card represents. This one is marriage, and it's very straightforward. It represents marriage or commitment of some sort. This one is passion, and we have two firecrackers. So it shows an energy that's very fiery, um, very passionate. It, it can, to me, it's one of the sex cards. I think that if you have a love and relationship deck, you need a, at least one or two cards that represent just sex, physical, um, expression. Sands of time was one that I decided to put in <clears throat> because sometimes timing is an important issue with relationships. It could be the right time to get together, the wrong time to get together. Maybe too much time has passed or um, so sands of time to me suggests time passing. Maybe it's been a while since you've been in a relationship or maybe you're uh, having a reunion with somebody that you haven't seen for a long time. First kiss is a relationship um, that's just beginning. Um, there may be some, something physical happening at this point, but it's still very much in kind of the infatuation stages. So I really tried to put some different cards that show different stages of relationships as well. This card, Trouble Brewing, to me, again, that I, I always have decks that, you know, there has to be light and shadow. Everything can't just be fun. So Trouble Brewing means something's going on. It doesn't necessarily mean betrayal or big problems. It just means that you're, there's something that might be coming up that may be a problem in your relationship. Love Potion is a card of seduction. So. I mean, depending on how it shows up and who it shows up for, you may not know who, exactly who's being seduced, but it is a card about uh, seduction. Three Wishes is a card about um, wishing and manifesting, you know, manifesting the type of love that you want or the type of relationship that you want. This card is called fairy tale romance. So on the one hand, it can be really positive, like a, a fairy tale romance. That's a really positive thing. Everything is going so well. But there's um, when I create cards, I really like them to have uh, both light and shadow within each card. And so you can also look at this card as uh, your relationship is a fairy tale. It's not real. There's something about it that's not that you're not seeing truthfully. Um, you might be uh, being unrealistic about uh, your expectations. This card is Healing Heart. And um, this is about your heart healing after it's been broken. So um, I 
found it really necessary to have this one in here. There's a you know card about broken heart. So I definitely wanted one to be kind of a, a pair to that with healing. Love at first sight. And so you can see I'm using a lot of like the little love phrases that people use like love at first sight. And this is a card that shows love at first sight. It can also show two people seeing eye to eye on something. So if it's not a brand new relationship, it can show two people again on the same page, um, seeing things in the same way. This card is lighthearted. And it, it really is a card about a lighthearted attitude or personality. In a relationship though, it would show somebody who's not taking the relationship very seriously or the relationship itself is just not it's not a serious relationship it's just a very playful light relationship heart of glass this is one of the songs um, if you're familiar with this with this song heart of glass um, this would be showing a rather cold and distant personality but to me, whenever we look, see cards like that, we have to ask ourselves, why is the person like that? And the shards of glass suggest pain um, and that this person has been through pain before and they may still be holding on to some of that bitterness. Um, so when heart of glass comes up, it's kind of like the guarded heart card that we saw before with the prickliness. This person may come across a little bit prickly as well. This card is love and war, and it's a card of conflict. So again, I always like to have a conflict card with relationship deck because, um, you know, that's what happens with relationships. They're not always smooth sailing. With love and war, it can show um, a personality that actually needs a sense of conflict. They need to kind of battle someone in order to make them feel you know, good in the relationship. So if you get it in a position of personality, you might look at somebody who just has a, a battle mentality. And this one is soulmates. And it's pretty self-explanatory. It shows two people who are kind of meant to be together. Maybe there's some karmic or destiny um, working in their relationship. This is a card of temptation. This is one of my favorite uh, cards in the deck and it's showing something's tempting someone in the relationship to perhaps go outside of the relationship this card is celebration and for me it's just a, a, a card of happiness and joy um, it can also show up for celebrations like marriage or hand fasting um, where two two people are coming together and there's kind of more of like a ceremony where marriage is more just um, talking about the marriage itself. This is more about the ceremony around it and the celebrations around it. And here's another song, uh, Love Stinks. And this is a woman, she's putting the hearts in the trash. So this is um, a card, is again, one of those spontaneous cards that just came to me to make. I haven't decided, I haven't seen it come up in readings per se. I have, I'm still working on readings and uh, putting down some of my ideas. But this is like when you have a really pessimistic attitude about love. You've been hurt before. You're just tired. You're through. You don't want to love anybody else. You don't want to be in a relationship. You're just throwing it all out. This card is unrequited love. And the, the image that I have in my head of what, what's going on, we have this girl and she wants to give flowers to someone who does not want to receive them. So unrequited love is about love that's not reciprocated. Wandering Eye. This one is um, about a wandering eye, um, somebody who is looking around and not necessarily focused on their partner. So their attention is really outside of their relationship. If you're, the question is, uh, is my partner cheating? And that's a question that comes up pretty often and you get maybe wandering eye and temptation and some other cards. You might say, you know, can't say if they're cheating, but 
their focus is definitely not with the relationship. Heart of gold, this really just represents a person, personality that is true, faithful, honest, sincere, genuine, good spirit. This next card is deception. So you can see a woman, she's turned, trying to see there's a spider crawling um, behind her. So this is a card of deception, betrayal, um, things may be going on behind your back in the relationship. This one is best friends forever. And it is um, a card that will show up when there's more of a platonic relationship or a friendship. So if you're asking like, where is this relationship going? Or is, is this like a, you know, a, a real relationship It's saying this is more of just a friendship and the best friends forever part of it, it could also show something that's long-term, something that's been going on for a long time. Then we have sexual chemistry. That's pretty straightforward. This is another sex card in the deck. To me, if this one shows up, somebody is having sex. Um, it shows a lot of sexual chemistry, lots of sexual energy going on between people. And the final card is Love Nest. And this is the card that I would use to show uh, people moving in together, deciding to um, create a home together, and a card that's going to um, comment on the domestic issues, things going on inside the home. And so that is my walkthrough of the, uh, the Love Notes deck. And that deck is now available. I'm going to put the order page for you. It's not a deck that you can get through my printer studio shop, but it is a deck that you can order from me directly. So I'll put that link. And in terms of the guidebook, that will be available through a free course um, that I'm creating and it's called um, How to Give Entran Enchanting Soulmate Readings. So the course really covers how to give enchanting soulmate readings with playing cards, but it also introduces you to my love and relationship decks, the Love Notes Oracle, the Cinderella deck, and the Lover's Oracle. And you'll be able to find guidebooks for all three of those decks in that course. So I'm going to be putting the link down below when I have that available. Thanks for watching.